Sri Lankan black tiger prawns. A unique dining experience. One word, but I, I could say unique. Lion beer. Sir Richard Branson, uh, he's always been the underdog in that world and like a role model since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Isso Kalupol curry with roast pan and uh, polsambo. Mindset and internal culture. Winning the best restaurant concept in Asia during the pandemic where other brands like McDonald's, KFC and whatnot won awards as well in the same space. The growth of our business is purely because of adaptability as well as focusing on the core of our business. The COVID crisis as well as the economic crisis were both short-term hurdles. Our focus was on the long-term vision of the business. During the COVID crisis, um, we basically used this time to um, focus on the core of our business. Uh, we set controls across the board. Uh, we tried to understand our business model better so that we can build something that's scalable. Uh, like most restaurants you would find in this space, they are chef-driven uh, businesses, right? We are recipe-driven. Um, so by building a recipe-driven restaurant model, we've um, built something that's scalable as well as profitable, right? Um, as we also use this time, I mean, so if you look at the pandemic, right? Wh what else did we do? I mean, the, the first thing you would think is, hey, we want to survive, right? Um, but I think, again, this is a mindset thing within our company. We wanted to thrive as soon as this was done. This was a short-term problem again. Um, so during the pandemic, we saw a, a shift in demand from restaurants moving into supermarkets. We immediately started pro producing frozen food within the first week, first or two weeks of lockdown. We, ordered, like we had packaging, everything ready. We shifted into frozen food. Uh, we were supplying a couple of the leading super, uh, super supermarket chains here. Uh, we've exported our products to the Middle East and the US, and uh, we made sure our cash flows was keeping us sustainable. Um, whilst doing that, we were saying, okay, so this is going to end one day. What's next, right? And what is the next pandemic, right? Um, and uh, for us, the next pandemic is going to be through labor shortage and um, further supply chain disruption. Um, so we started using this time to build something that is going to help us survive the next one and again, make sure we thrive. Um, during the economic crisis, um, the most obvious thing which everyone was doing was um, to leave the country, right? Uh, in our case, I mean, if that was the sentiment, in our case, what we would be looking at is, hey, how, how can we take our business to international markets and drive Forex earnings? Right. So we started looking at franchising. We went in for franchise shows. Um, we targeted the Southeast Asia and Pacific region. We, we were honored to receive, receive this uh, award as well as uh, to be a part of this program. Only two companies from Sri Lanka that year were selected to be part of the Stanford Seed program. Uh, one is us and the other one is InsureMe, um, which is an in insurance enabler. Uh, platform over here um, and um, this uh, definitely helped us um, keep our staff motivated during tough times and whatnot but it also pushed us to elevate our offering and our standards with the Stanford program this actually helped us a lot we had um, we actually had um, people from Stanford um, looking at our business looking at all parts of our business, our marketing, our finance, HR, internal culture, everything, and helped us curate a new strategy. During the pandemic, through them, we were bouncing off what is working in other first world markets and how we can adapt to that and what other players are looking at in those markets. The, the Stanford program, it helped us a lot. We're, I mean, we're very grateful we were part of it, especially during the pandemic. Um, we put our strategy together, what is our short term, medium term, long term, understood where we would require different types of talent in which stage of our strategy uh, to bring them in. One of the reasons we are here today is because we were part of the program, you know, and that's how much it has helped us. The initial stage, stages were, um, this business was bootstrapped, right? We wanted to build a working concept 
um, the goal was to build something for the for the middle income market. Prawns were perceived to be expensive and not an ingredient you can have every day. Uh, we are disrupting that space, right? So we're basically giving a product offering that uh, at a very affordable price bracket that you can have every day. Um, you can have a meal at our restaurant for the same price at one of the fast food giants in Sri Lanka, right? That's how we positioned ourselves. We have closed um, one round with a very strategic partner in our business who also believes in our vision and uh, has backed us up uh, up to this stage. Um, this investor actually came in pre-COVID and uh, and uh, has sit around very patiently and uh, yeah, he's watched how we were building the business and has been a great support. Again, how we have built this business is to make sure our outlets are profitable, right? So uh, how we're going to expand is not purely through raising funds only, right? Of course, that's one element, but it's also rolling over profit to open more outlets. We are right now looking at um, structuring a raise. Um, and uh, this is purely to expand across Southeast Asia and uh, Australia. Uh, those are our key markets. These markets, because um, they, if you look at it globally, Southeast Asia and uh, Asia Pacific, if you'd like to call it, this region consumes the most amount of seafood in the world. So right now we are at uh, five units in Sri Lanka and uh, we have another three outlets in the pipeline for the year in Sri Lanka. By the end of this financial year, we will have 10 outlets, right? So in the next five years, we're looking at a 10x growth. I'd, I'd like to hit 100 outlets across the world in the next 10 years. We're, and again, our, we've built our model in such a way where it's not only our growth doesn't, de doesn't focus, I mean, just, it's not determined by funding money, right? It, uh, we can also look at franchise growth um, if we find the right partners in the right market. Um, so that's how we've basically planned this out. We use the best quality of ingredients available in the market and um, that's the most important thing. That's why we see customers returning back to our restaurants, right? Um, but in these markets, how are we going to differentiate differentiate ourselves first firstly like this is already a position we're holding we have a very novel concept we're focusing on a prawn there are a lot of players in this market that focus on chicken meats crab and other seafood if you look at prawns it's a very niche and and we've kind of hit this right right so that's one part of it but this what are we doing differently again is we are reimagining what the restaurant and the kitchen space would be in the future we're building that today in our restaurants. We are adapting to technology, um, not only in the operation side of it, but even in the back end. We have systems in place to uh, make sure we have forecasted our supply chain requirements for each outlet, um, set controls, cost controls across the board. Anything varies, we check. We're building something that's scalable. And that's the edge we have. I'm not saying the other players don't have it, um, but we're taking our crack at it. So, so we're looking at multiple models. One is uh, going in there as a company and investing in our own uh, in our own outlets and making sure it gets right before we start franchising, right? Um, so, how that would work is if you take a market like um, Singapore, for example, we will go in there, open the first two or three outlets make sure this model is working, and then we start franchising to um, copy paste this, whatever is working for us, right? The second one, um, so franchising is one, investing in our own outlets are one. The third one is basically a JV, right? Where we find the right partners in these markets. We partner with them for local support and knowledge, and then we grow the brand in that, those markets. But that's one part of it. Right? But whilst doing all of this, you have to understand the local market. What is their taste palettes and so on. Our concept is prawn dishes from around the world. Yes, 50% of my menu is Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan cuisine is growing across. I mean, it's trending across the world right now, which puts us in a great position. But we are also adapting. Right. So if you look at a market like Asia, we would bring in Singapore chili prawns, rendang prawns, prawn laksa, Thai red curry prawns, sweet and sour prawns, Szechuan prawns these markets already know these flavors right and that's how we localize adapt and make sure we try and win in these markets yeah
how we think we're going to win in the next recession is by reimagining and redefining how kitchens should operate and how restaurants should op operate. We're bringing in AI to help uh, customers choose what they should order, as well as robotics to take in take the back end kitchen operation. And this is something we're actually testing out today. This is not. Um, um, like a vision board or something. We're actually building this today. We're actually opening outlets up. I mean, you should see this in the next couple of months. Um, but our kitchen should be se semi-automated through, through robotics. And um, this is something we're building for first world markets. We're going to tackle labor shortages. This industry has seen labor shortages for the past many years, right? We're going to tackle labor shortages. And even with the supply chain, we're looking at what is trending and what the future is going to be. One is Pescatarian is going to become the new vegan, right? And this is a trend we're seeing. Post-COVID, there's a huge shift in demand away from red meats into seafood, right? At the same time, there is, uh, with supply chain disruptions in the food space, people are adapting. I mean, there are markets are adapting to build plant-based alternates, right? You get plant-based milk, plant-based egg, plant-based meats, plant-based seafood, and so on. So we've actually... Um, we're actually producing, we're actually partnering and producing plant-based shrimp. We're experimenting right now, right? So this is something again that will help us 10 years down the line because that's going to be a problem, right? But we are ready today. We're ready to go. Whatever it is, we're ready to go. And again, with the pandemic and the economic uh, crisis, one thing we, um, a mindset we built in our company, within our company, my guys have been with me, most of them for the last seven, eight years, you know, one thing we built is tomorrow another problem will come, you know. We will always ask the what if and the how if and look for alternative solutions, you know, so that we make sure we thrive. <laughs>